Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to be installing an EMP shield on our solar and battery system here. Um, so for those of you that don't know, an EMP is an electromagnetic pulse. Now that can happen from two different reasons. One reason is caused from solar storms that happen on the surface of the sun. Uh, the, the other, it would be due to a nuclear detonation in the Earth's upper atmosphere. The EMP shield is going to kind of protect your sensitive electronics in your home from either of those two events. Uh, it's also going to protect your home from just plain old surges uh, and, and lightning strikes nearby that often are responsible for destroying electronics and causing damage to electronics in your home. Uh, in my case, I needed a surge arrestor inside in my critical loads panel regardless. Uh, so I decided to just go ahead and drop a little bit of extra money and go ahead and get the EMP shield. So that way, in the event that the worst case ever happens, I'll be protected from that as well. So uh, at the time of this video, um, there are rumors going around that potentially the wall mount batteries... The EG4 Flex Balls 21 uh, may be EMP protected right out of the box. Now, we did find that out about the uh, 18K PV and the Outdoor Power Pro batteries um, quite a significant time after they were released. And it was released to the public that, hey, if you've ever bought one, it, it is actually out of the box EMP protected. We have not heard that yet about the indoor wall mount batteries or the Flex Balls series. I'm kind of hoping that is the case, uh, in which case, you know, would in a way render this unnecessary. If you, you have a solar and battery system that is not EMP protected and you want to EMP protect your system, you may need multiple EMP shields. So you're going to need one for your AC side to protect your home and the AC side of your electronics here, and then you're going to need... Um, one or more for your DC side of your electronics. And that's going to be dependent on how many maximum power point trackers you have in your system. So in this case, I've got a Flex Boss 21. If I wanted to protect the DC side of my Flex Boss 21, it has three maximum power point trackers in it. And, uh, and that means I would have to use multiple DC EMP shields. They do make a dual DC EMP shield. Uh, where you can protect up to two MPPTs with one unit. Um, so in this case, you know, if I wanted to protect all three MPPTs, and I was using all three MPPTs, you know, I would use that uh, dual DC MPPT uh, EMP shield along with just a single uh, DC EMP shield. So what do you think? Do you think this EMP shield is actually going to protect us from an electromagnetic pulse if the worst ever happens? If you had to install a surge arrestor on your home, is it worth the extra cash to go ahead and upgrade and just go ahead and get an EMP shield? I'll go ahead and drop a link down in the description below for a few of these units. Um, at the time of this video, I think you can get $50 off for using my coupon code, but uh, those sort of deals always sort of evolve and change so as they change i'll be updating those links down in the description so at the time that you watch this video just always go down and, and make sure go down and check those out for the best deals all right so one thing everybody's going to want in their home is some type of surge and lightning protection uh, that's obviously not going to protect you from a direct strike uh, there is lightning uh, protection systems that you can't have professionally installed but that's not what i'm talking about I'm talking about lightning hitting, you know, 100 yards away, causing a surge to come into your home, whether it be from your DC conductors or your AC conductors or what. So now I've already got a first surge, whole home surge arrestor out at my utility meter. Uh, that is required per the National Electric Code for any home uh, that's working on the 2020 NEC or later. Um, and even if it's not required by code, you just want to have it. To this day and age, you have so many sensitive electronics in your home, whether that be GFCI outlets, arc fault breakers, little circuit boards in your kitchen appliances or in your HVAC system. 
And when things like trees fall on power lines or utility workers are working on the line, things just happen. Surges happen. They send surges in from the grid into your home. And, uh, and, and you're going to be stuck paying the bill. The utility is not going to be liable. and They're not going to own up to it. So uh, what you need is a whole house surge arrestor installed uh, right at your main service panel as power comes in from the grid. So my main concern is when the power goes out, the grid boss is going to disconnect from the grid. And if some type of surge happens at that time, my home is no longer protected. Um, some types of surges might be like hooking a cheap standby generator up to your home. Like, for example, in my house, I've used a little portable generator uh, and a generator manual generator interlock kit here where I can flip my main off of my critical loads panels, flip my generator breaker on, fire up my little standby generator, and run my backed up loads. Um, right? But that generator is supplying dirty power into a lot of sensitive equipment here. And, uh, and really, I, I want to protect this panel from surges and from dirty power. Now, I am going to be hooking up the EG4 charge verter, and I'm going to be converting that generator over to charge in my battery bank, but I am probably going to leave this generator interlock kit in place uh, just as a, another form of redundancy so that I can, in fact, worst case scenario, disconnect this panel from everything else and run it on a standby generator. Okay, so here's the EMP shield. We've got our instruction manual. We've got a nice little sticker here. Oh, and here she is. Oh man, and I can really just tell right off the bat, this sucker's got some weight to it. You know, this is a lot heavier than your standard lightning arrestor or surge arrestor, a whole home surge arrestor. So uh, clearly this has got something a little more beefier than your standard surge arrestor. But again, this is going to just provide your home with standard surge protection in addition to protecting it from an EMP. Okay, so this is the EMP shield meant for your AC side of things. It is rated for 120 to 40 volt. Uh, it's got a line one, line two, neutral and ground. It's gonna have these green illuminated lights once it's installed, just showing that everything's good. Looks like it has a maximum surge per phase of 211,000 amps. Uh, NEMA 4 rated, IP65 rating. Conforms to ULSTD 1449. Intertech rated. And you got a nice little QR code for uh, installation help. If you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, press the notification bell, or leave a comment down in the description below. So in my case, I'm going to use this little PVC. It's actually a reducer bushing, but it's going to work similar to the way a box adapter would work. I'm not actually going to glue it in. This is inside. It's, I don't have to worry about the weather, and I do want to be able to easily remove this in the future if I need to without having to cut it out. So a few things to note, you want to avoid sharp bends in the wire as much as possible. Uh, you also want to minimize the length of the conductors as much as possible. In my case, I don't have a lot of options here. I don't have room to punch it right through the side of the panel, uh, which would be ideal. You know, put it just directly next to the panel, just have a straight run into the breaker and that be it. Uh, I just can't do that in this case. So I was originally going to mount it down here and have like a 90, but I wanted to avoid that sharp bend. I think I'm just going to bring this sucker straight through the bottom and just mount it uh, kind of on its side. So unfortunately that knockout, the way it lines up, uh, it, it would actually have this thing 
standing off the wall slightly. I think the easiest thing for me to do is going to be to use some 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 uh, fender washers behind this with some tap cons to sort of stack it out off the wall. Flip on the breaker and see if this thing lights up. Mm. Look at that. Now don't those little lights make you feel good? Sure makes me feel cozy inside. My little uh, nut standoffs to get that thing lined up just right. Thank you. 